Hallelujah. I want to read from Isaiah chapter 6, starting in verse 1. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the tent. That train is a train of his glory. Okay, you know why when a girl gets a uh, girl gets married, she has the wedding train. A lot of you know, at least the more modern, I mean, uh, more traditional, have the train. And the longer the train, the you know, the more whatever. Um, the, the the train of God, his of His glory, just fills the entire temple. Glory to God. Can you say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. And um, and above it stood the seraphims. Each had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. With twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Now this would be um, Jehovah Sabaoth in the Hebrew, uh, the Lord of hosts, Lord of glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from tong with tongs off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my, thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and whom will go for us? And then said I, here am I, send me. Now if we run back over to Exodus, the third chapter, I'm not going to read this entire, um, well, I might read most, a lot of it, but not the entire thing. I might read the whole thing. We'll just see. Exodus chapter 11. What were we going? Did I say 11? Three. No. I looked at the one and the three, and then, put it, and then uh, verse 11. Exodus 3. We'll be covering from verses 1 through 11. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, uh, in the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush, and look, he looked upon and said, behold, um, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. And when he turned, he saw... Uh, and when the, the Lord saw that he turned aside, God called unto him out of the uh, midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereupon thy stand this is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was sore afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And they have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. For I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land into a good land, and a large, and a land that floweth with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, uh, per Perizzites, Perizzites, <laughs> and Parasites, and Termites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. We've got authority over all the ites, don't we? <laughs> now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? His here am I went to a who am I? You know, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel. And then Acts chapter 9, hallelujah, Acts the ninth chapter, looking in verse 1, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any in this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, that's Saul, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. 
It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished, astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, we, we had three different events here uh, in Scripture and uh, dealing with the uh, presence of God being made manifest, coming in contact with the glory of the presence of God. And um, in each one, we have kind of a different scenario, but we will end up with the same result. Okay? Now, first of all, we come to Isaiah. And, you know, he, he looks in, in the year the king Uzziah died, he saw the Lord high and lifted up his train filled the temple. And he just, it just undid him. I mean, he was just taken back by the, by the glory and the presence of God. You know, so much so that when God spoke to him and said, you know, um, you know uh, he, he was like, um, the Lord said something to him. He said, who am I? You know, I, I'm, I'm not, I, don't, I don't measure up. I don't, I'm not worthy to stand here. Okay, God the angel came, took the tongs off the altar, and cleansed him. And he said, uh, you know, who will go for us? And then he, then he goes, here am I, send me. Now, remember, he was, who am I? And then he went to, uh, here am I. All right? <laughs> then we get over to Moses. Moses is a little cocky. Okay? You see, see, if you're a base, God can lift you up. If you're, if you're abounding, or if you're not abounding in the sense of, of doing good, but you're, co you're cocky, you're arrogant, God can bring you down. Are you here? And so... The bushes, but the bush is burning. Glory of God's there. Moses, I'm gonna go check this out, dude. He gets it, and God starts talking to him. He says well, Moses, he said, "Yeah, I'm right here, dude." You know, I mean, that's kind of you got to think that. Put this in modern speech. Get out of old King Jimmy. You know, get it out of the Elizabethan. You know, the real flowery, fancy, you know, linguistic style of the King James language, uh, and get it in the modern. He's like, he's cocky. Yeah, like, yo, I'm here. He said, "Get your shoes off your feet. This is holy ground." And then he realized what he was dealing with and who he was dealing with, and suddenly he's afraid. And God said, I'm going to send you to do this. And, and, but the next thing you know is, who am I? <laughs> you know? So his, here am I, went to a who am I? You see, the presence of God brings you to the right place. Are you here? And then you got Saul on the road to Damascus. I mean, he's, he's persecuting the church, wanting to throw him in there, feeding the lions. He hates it. He hates the kingdom of God. He was consenting unto the death of Stephen, held the coats of the men who stoned Stephen to death, and it put something in him, a hatred for Christians. So he's riding out with letters to take men and women, to take them bound, and he's going out, and all of a sudden Jesus shows up. I call it the Mr. T anointing. <laughs> Fool, get saved, or you're going to hell now. Okay, can't you see Mr. T? You, know, can't, you can just kind of get that sense. Listen, Jesus did not show up for a social visit. Are you here? This wasn't a, hey, Saul, how you doing, buddy? Let's, let's, let's talk about the love of God. Let's talk about the fact you know, that I love you and I died for you. This is not what's going on here. He knocks him off the horse. Are you here? And then says, why are you persecuting me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but all Jesus. Yes, love is the motivation. Love for his church, number one. See, we get this idea that God just, you know, everything is sloppy, agape, and there's some of this stuff that's not biblical. Jesus came, and let me tell you something. The only thing we would have known about Paul or Saul, only we, never, we would have never known him as Saul, if his next words out of his mouth weren't what they were, we would have had something like this in the Bible. And those who persecuted the church got cooked. Hello? Are you here? He was breathing out threatenings. He was threatening the church. And Jesus comes and knocks him off the horse, and he's down there on the ground. He said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus, whom you persecute. What do you want me to do? That was very smart. That was the right answer. Hello. Are you here? But what we have here is we have people in different areas of life and different mindsets and different things. But when they encountered the presence and the glory of God, it brought them all to the same place, a useful vessel in his hands. Isaiah became useful. Here am I, send me. Moses became useful. He led the children of Israel out. Paul became the greatest of the apostles, all because they had an encounter in the presence and the glory of God. Hallelujah. And see, one of the things we, we do in the church is we, we try to get, uh, well, if we're not careful, 
we will become uh, so mental and so mind-oriented and so uh, whatever oriented that we leave behind the supernatural manifestations and presence of God in our services, in our life. We don't experience that, that place with God that we should in the supernatural realm. Well, we don't need that anymore. We've got, you know, we don't, no, 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 you know, we got, we got our five steps to this, and you know, thirteen, you know, formulas, and then the Romans roadmap, and all this kind of, yeah, and all those things are fine. Let me tell you something: a principle, a formula, a step, all that is nothing more than a marker of where you are in God. Five steps to this, and seven, you know, and I, listen, I, I like those things. I like laying things out, you know, that way. I like having, but they're markers. They're not the journey. I'm going to go out here, uh, you get out here today, if you get on any of the interstates around here, and you drive more than one mile, you look over to the right, there'll be this little sign over there in green, and it's got numbers on it. Most of them have the, little, the interstate shield of which one you're on on there. You know, mile marker uh, 213, 214, runs, you know, 40 runs through Greensboro, I mean, the 200, so you've got, you know, 213, 211, 212, all that kind of run through here. What's that? That's a marker for your journey. It's not the journey. The, street, the signs that tell you this exit does this exit, those are all markers. They're all uh, steps. They're all principles of that journey, but they're not the journey. Amen? And all of our steps and all of our principles and all of our formulas that we have, that we come up with and write books about and we give to people, and that's all, they're, they're markers. They're great. They're, they're wonderful. So I'm not demeaning them. I'm not saying don't, oh, I, you know, they're good because they tell us where we are. Okay? And we need to know where we are so we can, you know, keep going the way we need to go to get where we're going. Yeah. Amen. You know, when, when we first traveled to Europe, um, and, and when, the, when the whole fam went, we rented cars. And before that, I just I flew in. The people picked me up and took me wherever I needed to go. But when the fam went, we rented cars. And for our first trip as a family, we, went to, uh, we were going to go to um, Rome and then to Paris. Let's see here. I'm trying to remember now. The first, that first trip, we, yes, we went to, good gracious. We flew into Germany, that's right, and then went to Paris. Or, or, did we not go anywhere else? We didn't go to Italy. We went to Paris. That's right, because we flew, drove around and drove by Disney World, Euro Disney. That's right. So we flew, in, we flew into Munich, you know, and, went, and, and uh, they picked us up at the Bible School. Then we rented a car. Well, actually, we actually rented a car in Munich and went and drove down and met the, the Grunwalds. And then when we left there, they had, we were going to go down to... Um, Switzerland, and then cut across, come up uh, through the, the interior of France, up to Paris, and cut back across and come back. And they said, now listen, when you're driving our interstates, there's not going to be, you know, what they're going to do is they're going to get, further, get, get some city way down the road. It's not like here, you know, you, know, you get the next city. You know, if you get on the interstate 40, you're going to see Winston-Salem. You're not going to see Knoxville. Okay? There you did. I mean, you're on, you get on the car, and it's Basal, Switzerland. You know, that's the next that's the sign. So you've got you to know where you're going. You've got to know what direction you're heading in so that you can get the right city to get you on the right road. Amen? See, our direction should be going towards being more like Christ. We as a church, Faith and Victory Church, guys, we're on an expedition. We are on an expedition, which is a journey of faith that's leading us to victorious life in Christ. And that victorious life in Christ is there to establish us in a way that we can be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Or in Greensboro, in Guilford County, in North Carolina, and the uttermost parts of the earth. That's our journey. That's our, this is the trek. This is the expedition we're on to be more like Christ. But you know what? We're not just going to get it by the markers. There's got to be fuel in our car. But ye, beloved, you're building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to have encounters in the supernatural. You're going to have to have divine impartations. You're going to have to have the things you need that you can walk with God and stay on track. Hallelujah. Yes, we need the Word of God. We've got to study the Word, be the Word, do the Word. Got to act on the Word. But we've got to have those infusions by the Spirit of God, those encounters in the supernatural glory to God. Because people are all busy being about their head, being about their mind, being about their philosophies, being about all this. We need encounters in the Spirit that no one can argue with, no one can compete with, because God's manifest glory will bring them down or lift them up or straighten them out. Hallelujah to God. 
And that's where we need to be. Hallelujah. Kind of like being on that expedition thing. What do you think? You got to load up all the gear. You got to get, you know, what do you mean load up all the gear? I got to get my Bible. I got to get, get in the spirit. Got to be prepared for the journey. Amen. Got to make adjustments along the way. Like right now, if you took off for, for Tulsa and you're going to take Interstate 40, you have to make an adjustment. Because we had a rock slide this, last week. Yeah, but again, an, an indefinite. Yep. Can't, you, can't, you can't take the pass through past Asheville up on the side of Asheville through the mountains right now. It's closed. Well, I mean, there's, there's other ways. I mean, you know, you, you know, they'll, they'll divert you on the I-26 up to 81 over in Johnson City and back down. But <clears throat> there's ways around. But that's what you've got to do. See, when you're going with God and you're growing with God and you're, you think you've got all this figured out and there's something there, you might have to make an adjustment. And think, and God, and the Holy Ghost is like your GPS, you know, on your phone. You're coming along, he says, turn right. You're there, I'm going straight, turn right. Turn. And you, you pass the right, and it says, go to the next exit, turn around and come back. And redirecting, redirecting. Okay. Take this exit. Do this, do this. You know, he will, he gets, we need to make sure that we are living in the supernatural. We are not... We are not just, um, you know, the Bible says the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. If all we do is get, you know, the letter, the letter, the letter, the letter, the letter, and don't get the life, if we don't have the Spirit manifest in us, if we don't have the Holy Ghost working in us, we're going to be in trouble. Men and women you come in contact with, yes, they need to know that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, Jesus is coming back, and we're not a four-square church, but it's still good doctrine. Hallelujah. Amen? Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Healer, Jesus the Baptizer and the Holy Ghost, and Jesus the soon returning King. I like that four square stuff. That's a good pillar to build on. Amen? Hallelujah. We need to know all that. We need to know what the Word says. We need to study the Word. We need to confess the Word. We need to meditate in the Word. But we need the manifestation of the Spirit flowing through us. They went everywhere preaching the Word, the Lord working with them, confirming the Word with signs following there's got us we got to start we begin to believe we got to begin to anticipate we got to begin to get ourselves into the presence of god as individuals and corporately as a church so that there are manifestations of the spirit that confirm the word glory to god that shake the hearts of men and women glory to god that bring them up or bring them down or bring them in line it's glory to god so they can walk with god and fulfill their destiny and fulfill their purpose hallelujah not just so we can have a Holy Ghost Pentecostal bump. I like, I like, you know, listen, we, we, there's nothing like being in the presence of God. But it's not all for us. When Jesse was a little girl, when Shannon came along, you know, we would be filming Shannon. And Shannon doing something cute. And Jesse would run right over and get in front of the camera and say, Film me, Daddy. Get me, Daddy. Get me, Daddy. <laughs> Her theme song was, it was all about me. <laughs> and we got that song we sing, it's all about you, Jesus. And not, it was all about me. You know, but, but Jesse, she's, she's doing something cute, you know. <laughs> Shannon's still angry about it. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> yeah, she has a middle child complex. Hallelujah. When Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and these signs shall follow him, you know, and he that believes and baptizes, and these believe that do not believe shall be damned, these signs shall follow them that believe. He didn't say that you'll, you know, you'll, get, you'll have smoke shows in your church, and you'll have you know, light shows in your church, and you'll, you'll dress like a, 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 you know, like a girl if you're a guy you know, with your tunic and your skinny jeans and your bedhead. Now listen. I'm, I'm saying that because we have begun, we have begun to take a, a position in the church, in the charismatic word of faith circle type churches, now where you know the the formula by which we present is more important than what we present. That we're going to get people in because we we're rad, we're cool, we're hip. You can be rad, cool, and hip and be dead. 
You can be, you can be starchy and whatever and have the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not saying you've got to be starchy to have the Holy Ghost. What I'm saying is we have, we've begun to put confidence in things other than what Jesus said, which our confidence should be in. He said, go preach the word. Don't preach. Don't Listen, we're not called to preach. You know, do you feel better now that you've heard my sermon? My pep talk. This isn't about making you feel better. This isn't about making you, you know, you know have a good self-image when you leave here today. This is about an encounter with the presence of God that will radically change your life that will turn you into another person, that will come upon you, and it will infuse you with his presence and his glory. And if you're too arrogant, it'll bring you down. If you're too humbled, it'll bring you up. If you're just too weird, it'll straighten you out. His presence, his glory, his power. He said you'll lay hands on the sick. So he says, you know, these signs will follow them that believe. You'll cast out devils in his name. They'll speak with new tongues. You'll take up serpents. If you drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt you. You'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We spend so much time trying to convince people it's okay to sin, but they're still under grace, that we're not leaving room for the Holy Ghost to demonstrate the glory and the power of God to do a work in people. This transformative. Yes, we need the word. We've got to preach the word. My goodness, they work together. It's not an either or. But you know, we, we, we start adopting things in the church and we remove the power of the Holy Ghost out of what we're doing. When we begin to think that the mile marker is the journey, you can stop, pull out the side of the road, and go in and hug that mile marker. Kiss that mile marker. Set up an altar in front of the mile marker and worship the mile marker. Oh, I've arrived. I've arrived. Here's, here's I've, done, I've done mile marker 111. Hello? You're caught up in that instead of the journey. And what we've got to do is we've got to get back on the road. Let these things show us where we are. We've got to keep on the journey. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We started out. This, this, you call it a move, you call it whatever you want to call it. The church was birthed in the supernatural. It was birthed in the supernatural. And every major revival we've ever known has been due to the power of the supernatural power of God. Not, not some cute little thing. We come up with all these cute things. I remember back in the 90s, everybody was all excited about warring tongues and spiritual warfare. Wearing army fatigues to church and flying around the cities in helicopters and you know they're fighting devils in helicopters. See, if the devil can't keep you out, he push you over into excess and stupidity. I mean, went to a meeting with Brother Hagen, and all of these guys came in. They came marching in their army fatigues. They weren't soldiers. They just went down to the army surplus store and bought them. <laughs> they're the army of God. And Brother Hagen started. Talking along the lines of, of, of the, how this is out of balance, out of line with the Word of God, they all got marched out. Yeah. Getting the tallest floor, the tallest skyscraper in town so you can get up there where the demons are and fight them. Poor Jesus. He had to do it down on the ground, out in the Sea of Galilee. Hello. Had to stand down on the ground and fight demons. Couldn't get up there in the air like that and fly. You didn't do it. We got stupid. Well, it gets stupid again. Every time, you got cycles of stupidity in the church. And every, one, every single time what will happen is somebody will get this revelation, they'll run off, everybody runs to it, instead of staying, in the, staying with the signs, staying with the markers, watching them, staying on track, and staying in the spirit, letting the supernatural demonstrations of God be manifest and evident. The greatest, the greatest charismatic revival we know of, Pentecost revival, was, was Azusa Street. People came, people took ships from other countries and came to America, and from, came to the East Coast of America, and disembarked and got on trains and went all the way to California to that little mission, Azusa Street mission there in L.A., and to get filled with the Holy Ghost. So what a lot of you don't know is this actually started in Kansas City with Parham. And then... 
Seymour was, was connected to him somehow, and he ended up going to Azusa Street and, and starting that there out there, and that's when it, it just exploded. But it started in Kansas City. Small little you know, r- you know, rumblings of Pentecost outpouring there. If I'm not mistaken, somehow he went out of Texas, and then, then, then Seymour went out of Texas and out to California. And that's what we all hear about Azusa Street. But it started with people who were hungry back in, in Kansas City. They were hungry there. People who were hungry for the things of God, for the spirit of God, for the demonstration of God. And it began, it ignited a worldwide outpouring that we still live in, in, in elements of it today, over 100 years later. Major Pentecostal denominations came out of that. Assemblies of God, Church of God, Foursquare, Pentecostal Holiness. And, of course, the, the, the more original one was the Church of God in Christ. That's where the assemblies ended up really actually coming out of. It was the Church of God in Christ. So you know, I know people know who the Church of God in Christ are. Okay? All these Pentecostal denominations came out of that era, out of an outpouring. I'm telling you, the, the outpouring of God can change a, an entire century. And it did. And out of that came the healing revival and the charismatic renewal and the word of faith. All that came out of you know, people hungry for the things of God and the outpouring of the Spirit. And so we've got to stay supernatural. We've got to remember that no matter what we're doing, no matter how we're doing it and wherever we're going, we've got, to, we've got to have encounters with God and the outpouring of the Spirit and the demonstration of the Spirit involved in what we are doing. Because if not, the letter will kill. And that's what happens. People get all, you know, um, well, you know, we, we've got to be cool to get people to come to church. So pastor's going to put on skinny jeans. Now, yeah, I'm going to tell you something. If I've got to put on skinny jeans to win people to Jesus, it ain't happening. <laughs> they're burning. Now, I know that's not truth. They're not, they're not, uh, that's not going to be what it is because skinny jeans don't win nobody. We got guys wearing these tunic shirts and they're you know calling, but it's all flowy and all feminine looking, you know. Or they got to have this bed head mess, you know, where their head's all messed up. I mean, if you got a bad hair day, you got a bad hair day, but they do it on purpose. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys, you know. And I'm not listen. Well, you're just knocking everything. I'm trying to get us to understand. It, it's not whether they do or whether they don't. It's that that's where your confidence is. That's what you're putting the emphasis on. That's everybody thinks, oh, we've got to be like that. So all the churches start copying it because that's going to get people to come in. And yeah, people come in. But I'm going to tell you something, honey. What you win them with, what you're going to keep them with. You win them with cool, and you're going to have to have a lot of cool to keep them. Because as soon as some, something cooler comes along, they're gone. You can't keep up with everybody's cool. But if, if it's because of the, the authority of the word and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, we can, stay, we can always stay in a place where that's a manifestation in action. Because we can pray in the Spirit and be filled up with the Holy Ghost, and we can, we can be in the presence of God. We can, we can come always with our, uh, the, the, the glory of God on us in our lives. By being in his presence through studying the word. By praying in the spirit. Being in his glory. Being in his presence. And seeing God work. And seeing God manifest. And that, listen. What does that mean? That means whether you're a skinny jean guy. Or if you're a. You know. A, a, we, don't, we don't like saggy. Because nobody wants to see your backside. Huh? Dad jeans. Old school. Dad jeans. You know. I, t- I tell kids at school when they come, they come walking in and say, get them pants up. Nobody wants to see your nasty butt. Walk around with swamp butt and all that kind of stuff. We don't want to see that. You know? Nobody wants to see that. I ask, I, I'll even ask other students. I'll try and say, you want to see the nasty butt? <laughs> and they're going, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But we, we, we think that the hairstyle, the clothes, the this, the that, you know, the, the smoke shows, the rock and roll, you know, the, the, the light shows, the, you know, you're in there and you start getting sick from smelling that smoke. But sometimes it stinks. It's got this kind of funky odor to it. You know, all in there, oh, and that's going to get people to come to Jesus. I want to be in church services with the glory, the cloud is the glory and not canned smoke. And I've seen the glory. Hello. There ain't no smoke show can, can 
line up with that. So it doesn't matter if you have it or you don't have it. If you're, that's where you're putting your confidence, and that's what's happening in the church. We come up with all these things that's going to get people to come to our church. This is going to get people to come to our church. It's going to get people to come to our church. Let me tell you something. Honey. If they come to your church and you don't deliver, how many of you have ever gone to a restaurant? Turn on television. They got, you know, whatever restaurant, and they got the cherry cheesecake. I mean the California, I mean not the California, the New York style cheesecake with cherries all over it. And it's this big honking piece of cheesecake. I mean, you drool just watching the TV, and it got cherries all, and the juice all running down. And you're like, man, I got to go there. I got to have some of that. Go in there and order it. It comes out, and it's, you know, it's about a half inch high, and it's a little slither like this, and there's a, there's a half a cherry with a little dribble of, of cherry syrup on there. And you're like, that ain't what you showed on television. Well, I'm sorry, sir. That was just advertising. If we advertise, if we advertise, you come to our church, and there is going to be things for you that, that, uh, that will bring your life and make your life better, and then we don't deliver because we're too busy playing games instead of having God's word and God's power and manifestation. They're going somewhere else. You might have them for a little while. They might say, oh, it was really cool. I went in there, and they, they were like rock and roll, man. They had a sign. They, I mean, they put on a show. Yeah, the coffee was great. Let me tell you something. If the coffee is great and the show is great, but there's no manifestation of the presence of God, you ain't got nothing. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God, not by might and not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. It's not going to come because you, you had a great show. It's not going to come because you had a great presentation. It's going to come because the power and the demonstration of the glory of God was manifest, and it went into the hearts of people, and it touched them, and it changed them, and it moved on them, and they could not get away from it. I am telling you, when God begins to woo the heart of a man or a woman, there is nothing, no devil in hell can stop them. We're not talking about a mental ascent. We're not talking about a mental decision. We're talking about an encounter. But that just doesn't take place. Are y'all here? Y'all go home. That doesn't just take place because we open the door and say we're having church. The Apostle Paul says to uh, the book of Ephesians. Look over in Ephesians chapter. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I have so messed and missed my notes today, I don't know if I'll be able to preach this again using these notes because it ain't even close to anything on paper. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking with you either. I'm, 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 we're like, why do they even have these? Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Five. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to wrap up here in just a minute, or two, maybe three. Look at verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. That means come out from, up, come out from among the dead. <clears throat> and Christ shall see the, uh, uh, give thee light. See that you walk circumspectly. That means strictly. Now, I know this. People don't like any term that puts any kind of constraint on them. But circumspectly means to walk strictly. You have to walk in accordance with things. Not as fools. What is foolish? To think you can live any way you want to live and expect God's power, God's glory, God's manifestation to work through you. Hello? You don't say he can't, but it's not going to be your norm. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, the Greek really says, but be ye being filled with the Spirit. That's the, that's the tense of the verb there. How? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things about the great charismatic renewing outpouring of the Holy Ghost was that, that people just were all excited about God all the time. They were singing in spirit. They were worshiping God. They, were, they, were, they would come together, and they would sing for 45 minutes to an hour in other tongues, just sit there in the church service and get all filled up. No wonder we had such power in our services. I said, no wonder we had such power in our services. 
And as, as, they, as we worship the Lord, we, we worship God, we got into His presence and His glory began to manifest, then the expectation began to rise. I was, I was, uh, uh, Kevin and Ann Durant told me one time they had gone to, a, um, gone to Atlanta. They were going to see Benny Hinn um, in a meeting. And um, so they were, in the, they were in the service, and they, they were in the Coliseum there. I, think they, I forget which one of the buildings there, but big Coliseum they were there. And um, they're in there, and it's full of people. Well, Benny Hinn got on the Atlanta Motor Speedway out there. Well, if you know anything about the Atlanta Motor Speedway, then that's a joke, guys. That's the blue, the 285, I think it is, around Atlanta. Okay? It's not, it, it's, now, listen, it's either the uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway or the world's biggest parking lot. It could be just depending on when, when you show up. Okay? I mean, you could be doing 90 to 100 miles an hour on it, or you could be doing nothing because you're all backed up for tw three hours. Okay? So they're in, the, they're in there in the meeting, and you know, they're in there and um, waiting for him to get there. Well, they could come on down and say, well, Brother Ben got caught in the traffic out on the Beltline, and we don't, we don't know how long it's going to take him to get here. He can't get here. Okay? Um, you know, so if you go to another city and don't really realize what's going on, sometimes you get caught up in traffic you just don't know about. Don't, there's no way to get around. You're just stuck. And so they're all in there, and you know, people start beginning to sing. See, get a bunch of Christians together who love God, and, want to, and they begin to worship the Lord. And all of a sudden, they got the, the whole place got to singing in the spirit. What did God say? I will, I will inhabit the Tehillah. And we keep, you know, the Bible says praises, but the, the Hebrew is Tehillah. Of my people. What is that? That is the singing of halal. The unabated, clamorous, foolish worship of God. So hey, I'll inhabit the tahila of my people. So they began to sing in the spirit. And the whole place got to singing in the spirit, just worshiping God. And all of a sudden, people just started jumping up going, I this guy healed. And all over the building, they started screaming. Benny Hinn wasn't there. God was, that's right. They got to worshiping God, and they had the manifest presence of God manifest. Just God began to inhabit. And in that place, without the man of God, are you here? Listen, we, I, I get it, but I, I, let's, let's, let's understand here. The man of God is just that, the man of God. It's God who gets the glory, not the man. And if you're giving the man the glory, you're wrong, and he's wrong for taking it. Because God gets the glory. I said, God gets honored. God gets praised. And all over that building, they started popping up like popcorn, screaming. They were just been healed of this and healed of that. Just because they, the, the presence of God manifests. Brother Hagin tells a story about um, he, was, he was preaching in service and, and years ago, and there was, had a balcony in this particular church. And a, a woman had brought her husband. She'd been after that man for years to get saved. And he was a hard-nosed old rascal. Okay? Had, had a heart problem, thought he was going to die from heart problems, that kind of stuff. And she got, finally got into church. Thought, you know, if I don't get into church and get him saved, he's going to go to hell. because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's on the uh, precipice. He's about to kick over and die. And he's sitting there, Brother Hagin's preaching and talking about the glory and talking about laying hands on people and all this kind of stuff. Starts ministering to people and he, he's going, ah, that's just fake. I don't believe none of that. Just out loud. Just right out loud in church. Everybody can hear him. And the woman's just getting embarrassed, more and more embarrassed, thinking, oh, why did I even bring him? Why did I even bring him to church? And uh, now, Brother Hagin's sitting there on the platform, and of course he tells a story after he hears a woman's story and tells what he saw. He's standing there preaching, and uh, uh, he's ministering. He's laying hands on people. They're falling over, and he's like, he's just knocking them over, you know. And I've been in some service where they always knock you over. Bishop Nye, the South Korean Pentecostal owned his church about 30 years ago, they about broke my jaw. Wham! And when he laid hands on you, he laid hands on you. <laughs> I mean, oh, God. I'll go down. I don't know if it's a spear or not, but I'm going, you're hitting me again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Hagin said he stepped back up on the platform because he saw the glory roll in. See, when you see the glory, I mean, you, you know, you may as well stop everything you're doing just let that go because I'm telling you, God, God can do more in five seconds in his man of presence than you can do in a lifetime. All of a sudden, this man's sitting up there in the balcony, <laughs> and his, his wife's sitting next to him. He's just going, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's going all over me. Yeah, it's going all over me. Yeah, it's going all over me. She said, what? He said, uh, uh, that power he's talking about, it's going all over me. 
You got saved, baptized, and the Holy Ghost and healed right then. See, we have to have an expectancy for God to move and God to demonstrate that we've never had before. I know we've been out of our building now for, for about, actually, a little over three years, and we're kind of in this business part. But I'm going to tell you, we're just going to have to have the glory here until we get into another place. We're just going to have to, be, we're going to, have to get our anticipation up that God's going to work in the community center. We'll just leave the residual here for all the other people to come in and get in hit with it. While they're doing that Zumba Indian dance stuff, they're just getting that with the glory instead. Man, I, I, if I got lose, I can lose weight without having to listen to that. Hey, hey, oh God, just give me something else. You know, after about ten minutes of that, you just about all you can handle. You know, I don't know if it, anybody been here on Wednesday and heard that. Oh Jesus, Hallelujah! We'll just leave the glory around. I said, we'll just leave the glory here. My charge to you today by the Spirit is begin to pursue God like never before for His presence. Study the Word. Speak the Word. Do the Word. Do all of, see, I'm not saying stop being a Word of Faith person. We've got to be people of the Word and the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? And remember this. Be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen? That's what we went on and said there in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Glory to God. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. There needs to be more melody in your heart to the Lord than before. There needs to be more time in his presence than before. There's a job to do. There's a mission to accomplish. We got a, we're on an expedition. Hallelujah. I said we're on an expedition. Are you all here? This journey of faith that leading to the victorious life in Christ. That's where we are. That's what we're doing. Amen. Faith in Victor Church is on an expedition. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this time together. Lord, things I should have said that I didn't or things that I needed to say that I didn't, Lord, make that up by your Spirit. Things that I didn't need to say that were, were, were not helpful, just let that be thrown aside so that we get the purity of where your heart was, that we come into your presence, we come into your glory, and it just resides on us so we can take it to others and see them set free by your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're here this day, if you just keep your heads bowed, please. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus. We want you to know him. We want you to have an encounter with the Most High God. We want you to encounter his glory that will transform your life. Glory to God. If you're here today, you're not saved. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. I'll, I'll pray with you. If you're not born again, you don't know Jesus, I want to pray with you. Anybody here? I just wanted to make sure before we go. I didn't want to leave anybody left out. Hallelujah. All right. You can look up at me now. I didn't want, we didn't want to leave you, you know, unless you go out of here and not have an opportunity to come to know him. Hallelujah. We sure love you. We're going to, we're, 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 listen, we got the markers. The signs on the road say, you know, we, there's, there's signs on the road saying stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you here? Amen. You know, out of the medium, it says no, park, no, no parking here and, you know, uh, stay off medium and all that kind of stuff. We got signs on our journey that says stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We can stay full of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Is that something or just a, is that a prayer call? No. Okay. She had a hand, I was just in for the prayer call of God. Okay. All right. God bless you. We love you. Until uh, we see you again, uh, may you walk in faith and victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue on your expedition in him in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Love you. Praise God.